So this is 36 cells soldered up and ready to encapsulate. Before I encapsulate it, I'll uh, I'll go around and tap each little solder connection. And occasionally uh, you'll find one or two that has come undone and I'll re-solder it. Uh, I also do uh, a voltage check and an amperage check on it. I'll take a 500 watt light and stick underneath, shine up, and check each cell. Um, the tabbing wire here to the back side of this one and do each one. And you should get a half a volt uh, and short it out, you should get around three amps. Um, what I'm looking for is one that's eyeball. You know, you, this one's reading three, 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 and then you got one that's one amp. You know there's a problem. Go ahead and take it out, ditch it, and put in another one. Um, I did find one bad in this one and had to replace it. Um, once you get your cells laid out and soldered together, you do have to add a half a length of tabbing wire to the last to the end cell to let it stick out and you'll solder on a piece of bus wire. In the beginning, where you start out, you'll have a little short one. It's the length of the distance between the two tabbing wires. It solders in. Electricity flows up here, jumps to the next row with another bus wire. It's twice as long. It goes from the outside of this tabbing wire to the outside of the far cell. It solders in here. The electricity will flow over to the next one. Each cell is like a, a battery, like a little D battery, and you connect positive, negative, positive, and negative, and they keep adding up in voltage. The amperage will stay the same. And then you jump over, again, you bust it together, connecting this group of cells to this group of cells. Electricity flows here. You'll need three of these. Again, you bust it over to the last one, and electricity will flow from each cell, each cell, keep adding up. So you get back to the end where you'll put these two together. The back side is positive and the front side is negative. So this, I had to add this piece of tabbing wire, a little half a piece, soldered into this bus. And then we added a diode. Diodes come like that. I bend them to look like this. It's color coded. You got a little gray spot and a dark end. The little gray end will go towards the batteries and the big dark end will go to the cell. I solder it in. I use a black wire that represents positive. Comes into a terminal block. A little two terminal terminal block. I buy these. Now they're about two dollars at my local electronics store. And uh, same on this side. This is the negative. You solder in your bus. I use a white wire comes in. So these two connections will be what goes to my batteries. You get everything arranged. Now some of the cells you can see they're, they're kind of warped up just a little bit. Don't worry about it. I had one that excessively warped and I put a weight on it and I used a little bit of, of ultra clear silicone and to help hold it down. And when we pour the encapsulant it will flow under these cells and get between the glass and the cell as well as cover the back. Now my table vibrates to help spread the, the seal guard around. Um, it protects the cells from moisture and the environment and the main thing is oxygen. These cells will not last. You won't get 30 years out of these if they're exposed to oxygen. So you have to deny it oxygen. Another nice thing about this system is it runs cooler uh, by leaving it exposed on the back with just that layer of seal guard, the heat escapes. The more, um, the hotter this thing gets, the less efficient it gets. I actually produce more electricity in the winter than I do in the summer. In the middle of the day, this thing will be 140 degrees. My ray will be putting out less about 10 amps less than it would be in the winter. I can take a water hose and cool the whole thing off and my amperage comes up. There are people out there building this system with pegboard and two pieces of glass. And when you do that, it gets like 180, 190 degrees in there and you're not producing diddly squat. 
yeah, you put it in the sun, you hook your meter to it, and it shows it's doing good, but wait an hour till it heats up, and then you're not getting nothing out of it. So it has to remain cool. Uh, if you think you need more protection on the back, if you're putting this on top of your RV or something, then you can lay a, a sheet of Tedlar on it while the encapsulant is still wet. I wait about two hours, set them on there. It looks a lot better. The ones that I sell, I do add Tedlar to just to survive shipping. So now we're ready to encapsulate. Um, let me get it and we'll mix it up. 